So anybody, uh, did anybody get excited about that game last night? No? Too close. Not too, clo too close? Oh. You know, we can get so excited again about a, a football game that in a few years we'll forget everything that happened to, uh, yes, last night. But do um, you think maybe, maybe the coach in fact, didn't I hear some words about the coach? It was kind of disappointed in the team. I wish that the team could play a little better. I don't know how he could have that thought of uh, wanting a football team that scored 57 points to do better than that. I'm glad God's not going to be that way that, you know, the efforts that we put out is not good enough. But I know that when I get there, I don't want God to say to me, I wish you did a little more. You understand what I'm saying? How many how of you think about that? When you, okay, you're dead, okay, think of this, you're dead. But now you're alive. <laughs> you have a brand new body, an imperishable body. What's that word imperishable means? It, 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 it's going to live on forever. The scripture says that we're going to put on immortality. Not immorality, because that's not <laughs> really. Immortality. That, that means that we can never be defeated again. We can never get sick again. And that means that we're going to live on forever. And I know, I like, I like it when people compliment me for a job well done. How about you? Huh? Yeah. Farming? <laughs> Farming's a tough one, right? I think we ought to give our farmers a big hand because, can you imagine? I mean, we're spoiled. In America, we are spoiled today because we go to the grocery store and there's all this produce right there. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if we didn't have farmers that actually grew the vegetables for us to enjoy? Huh? Yeah. Bananas and fruits and all this. Flour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All those things that are on the shelf, and I think, again, because of that COVID thing, you remember when COVID first started and you went to the grocery store, store and there was empty shelves? Mm -hmm. How many of you uh, felt a little, maybe, scary? Huh? Especially with that white stuff, that white paper stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> The important paper. <laughs> There's a joke about that. You don't realize how much you appreciate something until you don't have it anymore, right? I mean, when the power goes out and it's nighttime, how many of you have the question in your mind, when is the power going to be on again, right? Uh -huh. Uh, especially in the winter time when it's 50 below zero and you have an ice ring or something and, and uh, all the trees are uh, so heavy that it falls on the power lines and causes a power outage. And we were wondering, when are these guys going to get it going again? And, and, and our city workers, the electrical department, will go out there no matter how cold it is no matter what kind of risk they're taking. And they're put, putting their lives on the line so that your needs are met. Well, maybe we, as Christians, need to take a look and have a different perspective on life. Because I think we're so spoiled, especially here in America, that, that maybe, 
as Christians, and I, I, I never want to pray for persecution. But if you look at the areas, the countries, or the Christians that are living under persecution, they have learned a secret, I guess. He called it secret. It's not a secret. That no matter what I'm going through, if I'm going through a struggle, then I have to depend on God even more. And so when I think about what's happening in America today and, and how easily things could turn from the freedom, losing our freedom, and living under a, a government that dictates how you think, how you act, and the government that wants to be the, you to be dependent upon them. And when I when when I think about this whole thing that you know the the we the people right who's who's the government it should be we the people of the United States in order to perform a more perfect union, right? First of all, what we have to do is we have to acknowledge God and who he is. And we have seen where we placed our faith in God, Ten Commandments on the walls at the school, teaching our children what is right and what is wrong, to where today you're not even allowed to bring the Bible in school. How messed up is that? Uh, yesterday, several of us went over to Box Butte, across from the courthouse, and, and we, we held signs to protect the unborn, right? We heard that there was a group of people that uh, are, are really pro-choice. They want abortion to be the rule of the land, and, and that's going on in the Supreme Court right now, to the highest court, to maybe overturn Roe versus Wade. And I'm pretty excited about that. Because maybe we have gotten so bad here in America that maybe there's going to be a trend to turn things around for the good. Sometimes it's got to get pretty bad before Christians will wake up and say, hey, enough is enough. And, and we need to start instilling the love of Christ in the hearts of men and women and start proclaiming the truth and the love of God. When we know the scriptures and we understand the scriptures, then we will know how to live our lives so that when we get to heaven, when it is our time, we will hear the, the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I, I think all of you have read this parable over and over and over again. And um, so I'm just going to do it again so that you kind of understand really what's going on in this parable that Jesus talks about. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. And to one he gave five talents. Now this word talents, I, I struggle to understand how did that word talent get translated and, and it, you know language is really interesting. How many of you uh, enjoy studying language? Huh? <laughs> I mean I I kind of enjoy it. I think maybe if I wasn't a preacher or in a ministry, I would be what would, you would call a, a linguist. Because I, I, I enjoy learning different languages. But maybe that's because it's not my real strong passion. Although I, I have been able to learn sign language. Which 
in order to be an interpreter in, in sign language, you have to know how, you have to know and have a command on both languages, the, the language that you're taking and translating to the other language, you have to have command in both languages. You have to be just about an expert in both languages. You see, a lot of times people think that just because they know sign language, they can communicate with a deaf person but you see, it's, it's not the same concept and the, the form of the sentences are really different. So if you're going to take this concept and, and interpret it to this concept, you better know all the innuendos and all the um, cliches and all that. I mean, for example, you know, how many of you know what the birds and bees is all about? Huh? Anybody? No? no? <laughs> Nobody heard of the birds and the bees before? Oh, yeah. Uh, so the birds and the bees, you know, the bees fly around and they pollinate from one plant to another, right? That's what it's all about. Huh? That's what they do. And the birds Is that what the birds and the bees are? Definitely pollination. Pollination. <laughs> you guys know what a birds and the bees, when I say birds and the bees, right? But if, if I was hearing some speaker and I'm interpreting this in sign language, I wouldn't be saying the, 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 the birds and the bees. I would be saying this word. And you know what that is, right? The three letter word starts with an S and ends with an X. You see, and, and that's the thing is that when we understand the Word of God, it's good to get into the original language to really find out what's going on. So we take this word talent, and what do you think when you hear the word talent? Gifts. Gift, something that you do and you do well, because, I mean, how many of you have talents? Now, now, now everybody should be raising your hand because you do have talents. You know, you might have a talent to farm. Because if you didn't have a talent to farm, you'd be losing a lot of money, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that we commoners that haven't learned about farming don't understand that, first of all, you have to have faith, a lot of faith, that the seed that you buy from the seed company is going to be a good seed because you don't want to be buying a, junk, buying a bunch of junk seed or seed that's no good anymore, and you plant, spend a lot of time tilling the soil and planting the, the seed into the ground, and nothing comes up. Have you, has that ever happened where nothing comes up? No? One or two times. Wow, that's pretty bad, right? See, I didn't know that there's times when seed don't come up. But the thing is that there, there's, there's a trusting involved. How about a carpenter? You know, oh, I like, I want to build a house and you have no experience in building a house, how successful is that carpenter going to be? Maybe not. Maybe not, right? Maybe, maybe not. Some people can do things like mechanics, right? You know? Sometimes you have to learn and teach yourself how to do it, right? Afraid of? Yeah. Okay. But, so we, we take this word talent, and you, you might be reading this, and it says, Five talents. Well, so I got the gift of, you know, gardening. I got a gift that I had to learn, playing guitar, and I still struggle with that. Um, you know, and I can go down and naming some talents, right? But is that what this is talking about? Well, so if you don't know what this is talking about, what you got to do? You got to figure out, okay, what is the original word? And it's a Greek word, right? Talenton. What does talenton mean? It was a measurement of gold or silver. So this is talking about money. To one he gave, let's just say, $5 million, just, just for sake of kind of bringing it into terms. To another, $2 million. And to another, $1 million. 
each according to his own ability. This is really important, right? Because God gives gifts to every one of us, but he gives it with our ability to take care of what he has given us to be stewards of. He's not going to give you more than you can handle what he knows you can handle. But it's up to you to do what he has blessed you with. And we're going to go on and find out a little more about this, right? So he went on his journey. And the one who had received the $5 million immediately went and did business with them. And earned five more million dollars. So now he's got, come on, do the math, $10 million, right? And the one that had, um, let's see, the one who had received the $5 million immediately went and did business with him and earned $5 million more in the same way with the one who had received the $2 million, right? He earned twice as much. How much is that? Four. 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 Yeah. Two plus two, two equals four. <laughs> Simple math, right? But the one, he had given him gave him one million dollars. What did he do? Buried. He buried it in that ground, right? And hid his master's money. Now, now listen to this, okay, now after a long time, the master of those slaves came and, and, and settled the accounts. And the one who had received the uh, five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you have trusted me with five million dollars. See, I have earned five more million dollars. Now, if you were the master and you entrusted your servant with five million dollars and he doubled your money, what would you say? Pretty good job, right? Hey, pat him on the shoulder. You know, maybe you throw a party or something. And his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant, slave. You, are, you were faithful with a few things and I will put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. And the one who had received the two million dollars came up and said, Master, you entrusted me with two million. And see, I have doubled your money. Now, now I got four million. Good job, right? Well done, good and faithful slave. You, have, you were faithful with a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. So basically Jesus is telling this story and is he talking about money here? No. Think about it. Basically what Jesus is saying is what I have entrusted with you. I want you to trust me and do something with it. Now, if you're a banker and, and, and you're expecting your employee to double the money and that employee does not double the money, in fact, he doesn't do anything with it, what are you going to do with that employee? Get you're fired, <laughs> right? And now the one who had received the one talent also came up and said, Master, now listen to this, Master. I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow. Now he's talking about farming, right? Reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. Now what happens when you go to your land and where you didn't plant seed? Are you going to go there expecting a crop? No. That's common sense. I mean, even a non-farmer would know that, right? In fact. What you probably see is a lot of weeds. <laughs> this year, a, the weeds were pretty big, huh? And he says, I was 
Afraid. Afraid. 